Hello, beautiful. How are you doing today? Welcome back or welcome. And believe it or not, this is actually my third time recording this freaking video. <laughs> we are on the final day of the little mini series that we've been on this past week. I kind of went off on a rampage on like a little crusade for my gays, for for the fellow LGBT, LGBTQ. Q community. I'm sounding like my mom. Oh my gosh, my mom be cracking me up every time that she goes to say the LGBT or Q uh, community. She always like watch up. The... <laughs> she always like watches up the letters. She'd be like, oh, you know, or she'd be like, ah. Uh... I'm like, mom, you know, hello. But I don't know. It's just a little inside joke. But I'm I'm starting to sound like her. I can't even get my own community letters right. But anyway. We've been on a little mini-series this past week, uh, exposing these dudes, and today is the final day of this mini-series. Mini Gosh, I'm not doing this a fourth time. We were getting it on this take, okay? And frankly, this video was supposed to go up yesterday, but it's just been a little bit busy. I've just been kind of short on time, I guess, the just the past 48 hours, but... I'm off the next couple of days, so I'm going to try to get everything, you know, together. Uh, the whole point of closing, the, the point of this video is to close everything out and just kind of, I guess, offer an explanation as to why I would do this. Because I think that for some, it might catch a few of y'all off guard that I even did all of this. And it might not even seem right, personally, because I am somebody that feels like uh, people's business is their own. Don't get me wrong, we all love a little bit of tea, a little gossip. I like to keep up with, you know, the know-how and what's going on, trending and stuff. I always have. I love pop culture, mainstream media and stuff like that. But in terms of somebody's, like, private life or sexuality, that is a personal journey. And everybody is entitled to being on their journey privately like people come out on their own time some people never come out people are discovering things about themselves learning things about themselves and it is their business to be discovering all of this you know just without somebody chiming in trying to say make assumptions about them so i respect all of that stuff where I have an issue is the shit talking and the bashing and the putting uh, down of someone else's lifestyle just because you're not comfortable within your own, you know what I'm saying? Or you're trying to hide or deflect by, by bashing and putting down somebody else. That I have an issue with. That's where I come in. That's the first start of it. Big Herc, he has made videos speaking on the LGBTQ community, mainly like gays and transgender people inside of prison, and he uses derogatory words and remarks, and also he's not even telling the truth in terms of the actual lifestyle that gay and transgender people have inside of prison, what actually goes on. He is uh, pandering to an ideal, like a, a kind of like a, a false narrative, and I don't even know why. I, I don't even know why this narrative exists, really. I guess it may be because of what people would think or something, or I think actually it is to protect the image of straight guys that serve time. I, I mean, you know, it's very bizarre. But there's two reasons why I think that this is troublesome. It's not good period. One is because of something that I had just seen right before I even made the video about Big Herc. It was sort of like a perfect timing, like a perfect storm when all of this happened because um, there's a guy that is subscribed to the channel. He has been watching regularly. I've mentioned, I've made a video about him and then I mentioned him in several videos. Perhaps some of you know who I'm talking about. PR256 and he went off to federal prison. He, I was recommended a video of his where he was showing some appreciation for this this channel, this community here, uh, and the videos that I have made speaking on what it's like, excuse me, for gay people inside of prison. And I didn't even realize the impact 
you know, when I first started doing these videos, I kind of just was doing it for my own, like, personal healing and uh, just kind of like, you know, oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe type of thing, like, you know, sharing, sharing these things, m m more so for myself, I would say, but I didn't actually think about how this could be, you know, r really help to somebody else and along the way I have learned this through you through through you through comments emails that I've gotten and I I feel very like humbled actually to 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 actually make a real positive difference for somebody else like that's a very that's a very great thing to 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 to, to do like you know and I almost I feel like I'm like I'm not worthy I'm just I just be just talking you know but if it helps somebody, I'm very thankful f to do that, you know. And after I seen his video, following behind Big Herc, yet another tranny, uh, you know, bashing video, like, it frustrated me getting back to the two things. The first thing is that it is not helpful, is I guess what I'm trying to get at. PR feels more prepared going to prison now because he is more aware of what he's actually going to be facing. There's going to be guys coming at him all the time. All the time. There will be. Every single day. Like, that is a fact. He is going to be expected to act as feminine as possible this is something that naturally over time you just become groomed to do because it is a survival situation your only means of survival is the environment around you uh, uh, i.e the other inmates and the only way that inmates are even having anything to do with you as a gay person or a transgender person is because of companionship intimacy, sexual favors of some kind, pleasure of some kind. Like that is the only value a gay person or a transgender person has inside of prison. And what these guys want, so in order to appeal to these guys, the more feminine you are, naturally acting, whatever, the, the more attractive you are to these people and the more that you it benefits you so it's just something no matter what you know will happen over time the sooner the better frankly but he's prepared for this now as well as the competition amongst amongst the other queens like that's something you would not know unless you were there out here there is camaraderie among the lgbt community there's gay pride you know there there is like a a, a brotherhood a sisterhood out here in there it's not it's not there is competition they they are very territorial because of the whole survival aspect if somebody is coming in you're taking from from me you know what i'm saying like i have built-in protection i have built-in resources now this queen's coming in and you are taking from me because there's only but so many guys anyway that that publicly first first of all there's only but so many guys that engage in this kind of stuff period but then there's even less that it's actually publicly you know what i'm saying so it's like i got i need to have all that i can as like that's the mentality of queens that was not mine but that is the mentality you know so that's where it comes from this competition and and these these threatening type of environment but he felt more prepared for this versus people like big herc the the big hercs of the world uh, I don't know if Lockdown 23 and 1 has made videos like this. I think that Jay Williams dude has too, but I haven't really checked them out. Trust me, if I ever feel like aggravating myself or I'm in the mood to shit talk somebody and I want some ammunition to do so, I'll go and check out their videos and if it if I feel offended, then I'll, you'll hear about it. You'll hear about it. But I don't be looking to do this. You know what I'm saying? It, Big Hurt's video was recommended to me. And I had seen it. And it just had came behind watching PR's video. And that's what set this, this fuse off. But anyway, when watching those 
people's videos and they're talking about how you're going to be beaten and raped and, you know, ostracized and, you know, nobody wants nothing to do with you and you just stand alone and all of these things and just call names and stuff. It's like you need protection. Like you, you don't have no protection. It's like you're just a target all the time. You know, like when you hear this stuff, first of all, it of course makes the person fearful. But second of all, it's just not true. It's just not true. Like it's just not true. You know, it, so that is one reason why it is just not good and not something that I will just stand aside and not speak my piece about, not speak my mind up about it because it's damaging for actual real people that are on their way to prison looking for some sort of help, some sort of advice, some sort of guidance in some kind of way. I didn't realize that there's people looking for videos like this for that purpose. I didn't until coming across people like PR. PR isn't the only person, but over the course of these years, I've, you know, gotten comments and, and, and messages and stuff and even spoken to people where I'm starting to realize this, that there's people that they're actually, they're, they're looking for help, trying to be prepared. So that's number one. And I'm thankful to be of help. But the main reason why it just burns me up is actually for the families when i went to prison my mom was terrified and i had to go out of my way to always try to calm her down that i was okay you know and it was an ongoing thing she was not at peace until i came out <laughs> I mean, she was at peace when I was in the cell with Cam. It was so cute. I remember when she first started to ask me about Cam and stuff, and I was surprised she had been, like, paying such close attention. But that's a whole separate conversation. But um, when I was in the cell with Cam, she was at more peace, actually, come to think about it. But in terms of really, you know, her anxiety and stress had settled, it wasn't until I got out. All during the beginning, she was very stressed out she had gotten shingles three separate times had two different surgeries my mom's a, very, a healthy lady she's a very healthy lady and granted there was all sorts of chaotic things that were going on for the whole family uh while i was locked up and that was stressful but then in addition she was very worried for me she was very worried for me and i can't imagine my mom's not the type to l watch youtube videos on prison and just YouTube in general, but she does watch, she likes to watch, you know, she's a mom, she likes to watch, like, you know, DIY type things, or, like, home garden things, stock market stuff, like, she likes looking at that kind of stuff, but, uh, I can't imagine if she did. There are families that do. You have mothers, you have brothers, you have sisters, fathers of gay people who are incarcerated or on their way to prison that just like PR and others look up videos trying to prepare themselves for what they should expect you have families that they're trying to relate trying to trying to be more aware of what their the person that they love is going to be facing or or is facing or will face and to see this nonsense all it does is make those people worry even more, stress even more. That's not right. It's not right, especially when it's actually not right. The information that they're taking in is not accurate, <laughs> you know? Like, if they knew more about the lifestyle and what it's actually like, it would be all around more helpful. And then in terms of what how they can be of support to the person that's locked up and vice versa, how they can, you know, help each other get through this difficult time. Because when one person goes to prison, everybody connected to that person is all affected. You know, it's, it's hard on everybody. So knowing more realistically what is going on, it just helps for a better situation for all. And then actually the third reason is for change. You know, I know that I'm not a big channel and Lord knows who watches, but you know, you sweet people obviously are the ones that watch, you lovely people are the ones that watch. But even in this, you never know who you're reaching. 
You know what I'm saying? Like the cousin of somebody, the friend of somebody that is related to to whoever or or maybe even in college studying government and now they've taken this in and th this is something that they maybe want to just you know keep in their back pocket if they ever get the opportunity to kind of speak up or or pitch an idea for some kind of change or something bump bump elbow bump elbows with the right person that they can you know put a little bug in their ear about just what's going on you know you never know equally so same goes for these larger channels speaking all this crap like you know they make a joke out of it make it for entertainment purpose it strips away the importance of actually trying to create some sort of change for the people or for the environment in general versus telling actual narratives you know or even if it does let's even say that it's like okay they're talking about people getting beaten and 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 you know terrible things happening to them all the time it's like okay well then if public officials or somebody that could actually do something sees that then yeah they would want to make a difference but you're also not telling the whole narrative of it you know what i'm saying like because then if they're only just trying to provide protection for like rape and things like that they have that they have priya in place that does protect against that but what about the other stuff of it like maybe like some mental more mental health uh services or something like that you know um just even investigating or or putting in place some more um i don't know like a procedures or, or policies for the administration and how they deal with these people you know because that's also a problem but it's like they don't talk on these type of things you know what I'm saying so anyway I mean I'm not thinking of myself as some sort of mover and shaker or somebody that's rattling the table shaking the table you know I don't see myself like that I'm not trying to be nobody like that uh, all I'm saying is everybody has their part that they they play in where whatever it is that they whatever life that they have you know what I'm saying and my part is to speak my truth you know what I'm saying especially in the face of bullshit <laughs> I'm an actual gay guy I went to prison and I'm telling you what actually happens. And for anybody else that be lying, just shut your mouth. You know, if you claim to be straight and you don't know anything about the gay lifestyle and you don't want no part of it or whatever, don't talk on it. Like, I think the After Prison Show guy is actually a great example. I'm not going to say he's, you know, the best or anything like that. I don't know the guy. But out of all the prison channels, I don't know. I think that he's... Probably the most, I don't know, I don't know. All I will say, out of all the prison channels, he's the most likely, I would think, that probably is just a regular straight guy. I'll say that much. Because he's never made, as far as I know, I have checked his channel a couple of different times. I don't think that I've ever seen him make a video about anything relating to the gay or transgender community. Which I wouldn't, I'm not surprised by that. Because what does it have anything to do with him? He probably had no experience with it. He's not gay. He's married. I think he has a kid or something like that. Like, he talks on the things that relate to him. You know what I'm saying? And why? what what benefit is it of him to sit there and bash or speak on something that he really doesn't know it much about? You know what I'm saying? All right, I'm not going to say you know what I'm saying again. But that's why it irritates me for those that do, they do do that. Like, the straight guys that claim to be straight, but yet they got all this to say. It's like, shut your mouth. You know? So, there you have it. This closes our little mini-series, and it sort of reawakens my passion to keep speaking on prison topics, because I was, before all of this happened, you know, maybe it's God, or maybe it's just YouTube, but I was sort of struggling with content just w wanting to find a new direction or um evolve in some kind of way but i don't think that now is the time um for one i still am connected to prison because cam is in there and i still go through things with that 
uh, him being in there, us being a same-sex couple uh, while he's in there, it is challenging. Um, so I'm still connected to prison. And two, I definitely care about helping those that need it. You know, like for others that is just just getting the tea, the little gossip, you know, going on, like cool. But for those that actually are really getting something seriously out of this, you know, it is like my my honor, I guess, and privilege to be able to actually help in that kind of way, like seriously, you know, seriously. So definitely, I will keep doing this, and we are moving on from this topic from these people. But I hope that you're having a great day. Sorry for being late today. And I will see you tomorrow. I'm going to see you tomorrow. Love you guys. Bye.